This is the third and final set of notes on Chapter 5, The Working Cell. This section is entitled Enzymes and Energy. So, as a review, uh, chemical reactions require activation energy, which is the energy needed to get the reaction started. It's like the kickstart to push you down the hill. And enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy required to start the reaction. Now remember, enzymes are usually proteins. They are active in small amounts because the enzyme can be used over and over since it is not changed in the reaction. Enzymes are specific for the reaction they catalyze. Their names end generally in ASE and they work best at a certain pH or temperature. Remember that pH changes and temperature changes can lead to denaturation of the uh, protein, which changes the shape and it's irreversible. If the shape is changed, it doesn't work anymore because the substrate and the enzyme fit together like pieces of a puzzle. Remember the substrate is the, is the substance the enzyme breaks or puts together, okay? This is a review, we've studied these things before. Now these graphs show the path of various kinds of reactions. Remember, endergonic reactions are the ones that give off energy. I'm sorry, that absorb energy. And we have here the reactants beginning at a low level of energy, uh, raised to the activation energy, which causes the reaction to occur, and the products end up at a higher energy level than the reactants, showing that the reaction um, gains energy or absorbs energy. Um, you might have called this an endothermic reaction in the past, and endothermic reactions are a type of endergonic reactions, but endergonic refers to the fact that it's chemical energy rather than, or just energy in general, and the type of energy we're talking about is chemical energy in the form of ATP. In an exergonic reaction, um, the reactant started at a little bit higher energy level, and you raise them to the reactivation energy level to start the reaction, and the products end off at a lower energy level than the reactants. These reactions give off energy or release energy, and again, we're talking about chemical energy in the form of ATP. Now, enzymes change that because they lower the amount of energy required to start the reaction. They reduce the activation energy, showing there's a much different path uh, with the enzyme than without. This makes the reaction occur more quickly and uh, and um, makes things go faster and use less energy in the cell, which is better for the cell. So how do these reactions occur? Well, remember that chemical reactions involve breaking bonds and forming new bonds. Endergonic reactions require energy. In the case of cells, we're talking about chemical energy. And so these are going to be involved in taking ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and adding a phosphate plus energy to produce ATP. ATP is the energy storage molecule in the cell. The exergonic reactions are going to release energy. They are going to take ATP and break it down to ADP plus phosphate to release the energy for the cell to use for active transport, movement, any kind of thing like that that the cell needs energy for. Here's what the ATP molecule looks like. It's made of adenine, which is one of the nitrogen bases found in RNA and DNA, ribose sugar, which is the five carbon sugar found in RNA, and three phosphate groups. If you take just one of the phosphates plus the ribose and the adenine, that makes a nucleotide that is an adenine nucleotide that is used in RNA. By adding two more phosphates, we're adding energy to the, to the molecule. Notice the wiggly lines here represent the high energy unstable covalent bonds. So the energy releasing reaction, remember, is ATP produces ADP plus phosphate plus energy for cell activities. The video will show how that works. The molecule used by most organisms to transfer energy is called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. And ATP has three parts, adenine, ribose, and phosphate groups. Adenine is one of the bases found in DNA and RNA. Ribose is a sugar molecule found in RNA. The adenine and ribose portion of the ATP molecule is called adenosine. The three phosphates linked to the ribose in a chain are called triphosphate. 
adenosine together with the three phosphate groups is called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Notice the wavy lines between the two outer phosphates. The wavy lines represent high energy bonds. Breaking the first high energy bond in ATP releases energy and a free phosphate. This energy is used to power cellular activity. Adenosine with only two attached phosphate groups is called adenosine diphosphate or ADP. Energy from the breakdown of food is used to change the ADP to an ATP. The energy stored in ATP is transferred and released when needed to power cellular activities. This process may occur as many as 10 million times per second in some cells. So AP, ATP is the molecule that the cells use to transfer energy for various cellular activities. ATP is like a battery because it stores energy until it's needed and it can be recharged. It's like money because it can be spent by the cell when, it, when it's needed. And cells store ATP in the unstable covalent bond between the phosphates. That concludes this section of notes about energy and enzymes. Um, be sure to make sure that you write a summary of the notes in your notes um, in your notebook and be prepared for your test on Tuesday.